A letter claiming to be from the Mexican drug cartel blamed for the deadly abduction of four Americans says they have turned over its own members who are responsible. Only two out of four Americans made it back to the U.S. alive after being mistaken as Haitian smugglers. Fox's Mills Hayes is live in Harlingen, Texas, where the bodies of the deceased victims were brought to a funeral home today. Uh, Mills, we were speaking just yesterday. I had asked you, when are these bodies going to be repatriated back to the United States? And it looks like they have, according to your reporting. Yeah, Andrew, uh, they actually uh, just came to this funeral home in Harlingen, Texas, uh, about two hours ago now. Uh, and it was kind of a delay. I spoke with a funeral director in Brownsville who tells me that uh, there's a lot of different procedures and things that need to be done to uh, deceased bodies in Mexico before they're allowed to actually make it over into the port of entry. So that is kind of an explanation there for that delay. Uh, but it also comes on the same day uh, that we are seeing an alleged apology from the cartel members who are responsible for the deaths of these two Americans. And so I want you guys to take a look at this video from earlier today. This was when uh, these caskets of both Shaid Woodard and uh, Zindel Brown were being brought into the funeral home here in Harlingen, Texas, finally back on U.S. soil. A report attained, obtained today from Brownsville police shows that a fifth person had traveled with the group to Texas but did not cross into Mexico. The friend who remained behind called police Saturday after not being able to reach them for 24 hours. Last Friday, Latavia McGee, Eric Williams, Zindel Brown, and Shaid Woodard drove from Brownsville, Texas into Matamoros, Mexico for one of them to get cosmetic surgery. Dramatic video shared on social media showed the group being shot at by armed guards and loaded into a pickup truck. Only McGee and Williams made it back alive. Republican Senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham, says he wants to declare war against the court cartels. Here's what I'd say to the cartels. Uh, last year, 70,000 Americans died from fentanyl poisoning coming from your business model. You're a bunch of terrorists. You need to be treated as terrorists. The Scorpion faction of the Gulf Cartel in Matamoros said they were deeply sorry in the letter. It says that they decided to turn over those directly involved and responsible in the event, who at all times acted under their own decision making and lack of discipline. They said the individuals went against the cartel rules, which includes respecting the innocent. Former U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr says prosecuting the murders in this attack against Americans won't solve the problem. The cartels need to be destroyed. Using every tool we have, intelligence tools, military special operations, drones to collect intelligence and to act against them. Yes, using the Mexicans that are willing to help through vetted units that, that we know are safe and we can trust information with. And along with that letter was a photograph of five individuals that the cartel says is responsible for the death of these two Americans and one Mexican woman as well. In the photo, they are bound together next to a vehicle in Matamoros, a vehicle that the Mexican authorities say what they were looking for in connection with this attack that happened on Friday. Andrew? Yeah, Mills, I want to put up the tweet, too. Uh, you posted a photo of the letter. Uh, this is something, uh, to me, seems not very customary for a cartel to accept responsibility, blame for something as heinous as this, that some of their members committed. So much so, turning them over. Well, and some people have said that this could be a public relations move on the cartel uh, part. You know, you don't really think of the cartel having a public relations department, but they have seen an increase uh, of pressure from American lawmakers that are really uh, just calling on uh, the federal government to attack these cartels, to declare war against them, like we mentioned. So there's a lot of pressure on the cartels. And, and remember that these cartels uh, rely on their business model to make millions of dollars. Yeah. So it's not like they want to stop it in any way. Uh, and so this is kind of a way for them to be able to relieve that pressure off of them and kind of admit fault, uh, really blame it on those five individuals and who knows if they were actually the ones who committed it or not. Yeah, Mills, just last day, I know you have to go, but there were reports that there was a fifth individual, like you just mentioned. Uh, have we confirmed that? Uh, because apparently that fifth individual is speaking out, right? 
Yes, we have confirmed that. We actually uh, got a report uh, from Brownsville Police today. Uh, I, I believe her last name was Orange. Miss Orange uh, was able to contact police the Saturday after her friends left in Mexico. She didn't end up actually going over to Mexico because uh, she didn't have her ID on her, but she was aware that her friends were going over there for cosmetic surgery. And when she didn't hear from them for about 24 hours, she did reach out to police and file a missing persons um, report. Uh, and, and she was concerned in the report. You can actually read through it. She was concerned and told police that she thought maybe that perhaps they had gotten arrested because they were uh, known to, to party and stuff like that. So uh, very interesting. I know that she has already made it back to uh, okay. South Carolina. Uh, but yeah, this was uh, another person that we were learning was actually down here with these South Carolinians to come and, and go across into Mexico. First time we're hearing that there was a fifth person that uh, came along. Andrew. Yeah, yeah the story just uh, keeps developing. Mills Hayes there live for us in South Texas. Mills, thanks so much. Thank you.